One thing that shouldn't be denied is the intelligence and perseverance of Modius in the accurate studying of the Plutonian. As he explained to Qubit that the powers of the Plutonian is psionic, meaning that the Plutonian's power derives from the practical use of psychic abilities, revealing him to be a paranormal phenomenon. For the Plutonian is no ordinary being, especially when he demonstrate his abilities it takes a lot of energy to discharge such power and strength for example what we all consider as laser fiery beams coming from his eyes are what happens when he transfer kinetic energy into air molecules striking his eyes turning them into a stream of superheated gas and also he has the capabilities of withdrawing molecular motion from the air by reducing its temperature to sub-freezing levels. Modius Android, whom is being inhabited by Modius, explained further to Qubit that the Plutonian can't emit X-ray visions to see through solid objects, but he is able to mentally alter the atomic structure of objects in looking at making them more permeable to electromagnetic radiation. In this way, his brain can can interpolate an image based of all various wavelength which can receive what human senses cannot now him flying has nothing to do with his physical abilities but with him being able to mentally shift his mass into his surrounding atmosphere through telekinesis what amazes modius android whom is being inhabited by modius is that the plutonian can manipulate the density of matter with his touch which helps him toughen his skin and muscles in his body to be as hard as diamond. Not only that, through this alteration of matter, subconsciously results in him lessening the density of his opponents in order to smash through them easily or lift ocean liners without them collapsing under their own weight. That the plutonian as an entity in his own form and physique defies laws of physics, logic and science and his powers were beyond explanation. Qubit, as intelligent as he was, was perplexed that he never came to such conclusion. Modius Android, whom is being inhabited by Modius, told Qubit that the Plutonian is special, unique, and that he had known for years that the Plutonian's abilities and powers is more of mind over matter, in which he can detect with perfect precision the position and the momentum of atoms around him. And the the funniest part is that the Plutonian doesn't know that he does these things. It just comes natural to him. The only thing running in his subconsciousness is that he is strong. For the Plutonian is so powerful and he is capable of redefining reality due to the fact of him being able to alter quantum mechanics with his brain by changing probability and capable of reversing entropy and seeing through time. But to Modius Android, whom is being inhabited by Modius, was disappointed that an entity like the plutonian with his powers was wasting his time chasing after bank robbers for he is more if possible closer to being a god cubit was still on the subject on why he never thought of this in which modius android whom is being inhabited by modius told him that he erased every information about the plutonian's abilities from his memory with a neuro program in form of a flu because selfishly he wanted to be the only only one that understand the plutonian still beating the hell out of each other the plutonian and the giant bat-like creature crashed landed into the forest of woes which Oraran described as the second level and before the plutonian could put up any resistance the three men of the forest of woes began to attack both him and the giant bat-like creature and all of a sudden the plutonian blacked out the manipulative burrows after a hard day's job at the paradigm's headquarters Quarters was at a bar having a conversation with a reformed ex-villain called Kemo, whom also is part of the new recruits in Paradigm. And in all truth, he was avoiding survival, explaining to Temo that the survivor is a nutcase and too overambitious for his liking. But he had no choice, for he rather be with him than be against him. He went further to explain what happened that morning as the survivor came to him furious because Cubit and Kaidan were nowhere to be found. And this heightened his paranoia asking Burrow
Burroughs to mentally find them with his psychic abilities. But in all fairness to Burroughs, he couldn't find them. They just disappeared, in which made the survivor even more furious and paranoid to the point his agitation was causing a headache mentally for Burroughs, in which he begged him to calm down, for the survivor was under a lot of pressure, realizing that he had beaten more than he can chew with all his promises to the people. Worst of all, he believed in his heart that Cupid and Kaidan had deserted him, for it is well known that the survivor hates rejection, and he was sure that there was no one at the moment who was capable of hurting them because he believes that they had conquered most of their powerful foes and adversaries, coming to a conclusion that they have abandoned him like Gilgamesh and Betinor. As Burroughs was about to divulge the survivor's personal agenda to Temo, unexpectedly, a calm chariot beast walked in on Burroughs and apologized for forcing him into reading the minds of the new recruits to the paradigm. And he was also sorry for shouting at him earlier when he was looking for Cubit and Kaidan. But out of the blues, chariot beast let Burroughs understand that he knows he read his mind without his permission. And Burroughs was too scared to deny it. Surprisingly, the Plutonian found himself in his constructed fantasy which led him to a memory from his past which to be frank and to be honest the Plutonian doesn't want this for these were memories when the Plutonian first came out as a hero when a jet exploded in mid-air due to mechanical faults and this cost the life of one of the pilots but lucky enough for the second pilot he was able to eject himself out of the crashed jet but the impact from the explosion made him pass out so he was unable to pull out his parachute because he fainted and he was on a free fall. Immediately, the plutonium flew to the air to rescue the pilot. But there was a problem. This crashed exploded debris of the jet was falling straight down to the crowd on the ground. And it was falling down very fast. Quickly, the plutonium pulled out the passed out pilot's parachute. And with his powers, he flew to the falling jet's debris and disintegrated the debris to nothingness before it could touch the ground. On that day, the plutonium saved the life of the pilot and his scared crowd on the ground for it was a jet exhibition day at first the plutonian thought they would be scared of him but he was met with adulation and gratitude from everyone and then he heard the voice of auroran telling him to snap out of it and immediately the plutonian came back to reality in the forest of woes where the three men were attacking him and in a blink of an eye he used his laser fiery beam to dissipate the attacking forest and the bat like creature was in contention with the forest as well attacking the three men brutally in seeing this the plutonian was impressed with the creature as they fight side by side with the forest since the plutonian could understand the giant bat-like creature it introduced itself as modansi and the plutonian showed appreciation to modansi's brutality and asked modansi to join him in getting out of genom now auroran asked the plutonian where his mind traveled to when he was attacked by the three men of the forest of woes and the plutonian replied him that the forest of woes took him to his constructed fantasy by taking him to his early days when he just started out as the plutonian and he doesn't know why and this was a bit strange to him but the truth is that unknown to the plutonian who had forgotten the face of the second pilot he saved from the jet crash was the image of whom auroran is using as a living existing persona but why